Now we're going to debunk the existence of extreme weather. Kara, any thoughts on this? Or is your entire state on fire again? I can't, <laughs> I can't hear you through the ash in the air. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, the title card said facts. On this part. <laughs> yeah, the title card here is Facts, Extreme Weather. And basically, they just bring out a bunch of pseudoscientists to be like, the weather is not extreme. Talk to me when a tornado can skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and sitting in Cannabis Legal Buddy House, New Jersey, <laughs> yeah. my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Uh, not legal fast enough, Heath. Not legal fast <laughs> enough. Kept warm by the white hot rage I have for this movie. Ooh, <laughs> I felt that through my, my headphones. Nice. And also joining me is veteran guest maskist. Science communicator, podcaster, and my fellow panelist on the upcoming Incredulous episode 50, streaming live on Saturday, the 14th, I think at 1 p.m. Eastern. Cara Santa Maria. Cara, welcome back. Thank you. I am not happy to be here. <laughs> it's, it's a pattern. Triple crown. Speaking of which, Cara, what? Amazing science documentary hosted <laughs> by 90s TV Hercules are we going to be talking about today? I heard, I heard when you said science, it was in quotes, right? I heard Air that. quotes. Or yeah. a, anytime we say science today. <laughs> yeah. It autocorrects in our Google Doc. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> did you mean lie? <laughs> I did. I did. Um, like, so like today, like we're going to be talking about <laughs> like Climate Hustle 2. <laughs> Wow. Excellent. That was your uh, AOC impression. That was my yes. mini AOC impression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was not Perfect. an impression of actual AOC. It was an impression <laughs> of them doing a horrible impression of AOC with like... A child. A nine-year-old girl <laughs> who's going to be so mad when she gets older and realize what they did to her. Oh, she's oh. going to be so gay. She's going to get so gay just out of revenge <laughs> to her parents. She is. She's going to be like the most feminist lesbian they like, them pronouns all up in hardcore. those parents it's gonna grill. be amazing yeah. and her parents are just gonna <laughs> lose it their heads are gonna explode looking forward to it all right and eli how bad was this movie well if you liked climate hustle one but it didn't have enough deep state crazy and child political props <laughs> you will love this movie this is what happened the people who made climate hustle one saw out of the shadows and thought Oh, damn, we've been working way too hard. Look at all this shit. All we had to do was put scary words on the title cards. Damn. Done. All right. And is there anything y'all would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'd say that this is the best worst sequel. That's basically just the first movie all over again. <laughs> what was the point? Indistinguishable. You could you could just like shuffle the scenes like cards and mm -hmm. make two movies again. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn it. Now that's going to be Climate Hustle 3. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving them that idea. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go with best worst message from Vimeo on my screen. So to watch this movie, you have to go to climatehustle2.net or co something. I don't know. And then eventually the link brings you to Vimeo and you have to spend way too much money renting this movie. Mm -hmm. And every time I put my mouse over my screen, it would say, you rented this. <laughs> <laughs> like a constant reminder mocking me. <laughs> yeah, it's the only thing in my Vimeo queue now. So guess that algorithm is broken. Yep. <laughs> one by one, we bring all your algorithms down till you have nothing left but god awful movies, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to go with best worst host. So... This is the second time this has happened now. The first time being the unmiracle. Kevin Sorbo obviously has some specialized I'll be in your movie, but I'm not leaving my vacation <laughs> contract that he is offering to Christian slash pseudoscientific cinema. They might as well like watch him at lunch with his. I, I'm sorry. They actually do watch him at lunch. Yep, at one that point. happens. He eats a 
pretty large percentage of a cow or tries to. <laughs> yep. Yikes. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break to furiously hit refresh on the election results. We're recording this on Friday. <laughs> and then we'll be back to tell you all about Climate Hustle 2 while we furiously hit refresh on the election results while we talk about it. <laughs> well, then I guess I'm going to drink all this scotch by myself. Don't. Don't. Hey, Eli, did you send my dad a... Uh, why are you holding a bottle of scotch near the keyhole to Heath's room? Oh, I'm, I'm trying to brush his teeth. You're, you are brushing his teeth? Yeah, yeah, he hates it. Well, why don't you try Quip? I mean, Heath appreciates a bone mow as much as anybody, but I don't think that's actually going to get him to brush No, 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 his... Eli, Eli, Quip, the electric toothbrush. Now it connects to the free Quip app so you can earn amazing rewards like free products and discounts. So wait, they reward you for brushing? Exactly. Quip also delivers brush head, floss, and toothpaste refills every three months, starting from $5. Shipping is free, so you can save money and skip the store. And if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. You hear that, buddy? Rewards for flossing, huh? Buy the scotch under the door and I'll think about it. Ooh, Eli, box in a string trap? Yeah, let's do box in a string trap again. <laughs> Mr. Sorbo, Mr. Sorbo, Kevin Sorbo. Oh, damn it. Are you going to serve me a child support summons? Um, n no. No. Oh, hey, that's great. What do you kids want? Y you want to buy an autograph? I'll sell you an uh, autograph. Well, uh, maybe later. It's just we're, we're making our climate change movie. And we're wondering if we could interview you here, right on this beach. You, you want to randomly interview me on a beach and put it on your movie? We sure do, mm -hmm. Mr. Sorbo. Uh, you know what? Why the heck not? What's the movie about? Okay, so it's all about... You know about what? I don't fucking care. I don't oh. care. More scream time for K-Sorbs. Uh, but hey, tell you what. If you see some guy dressed as a UPS man and he asks for me, don't tell him where I am. Okay, kids? All right, you got it. Okay. Hey. You, how old are you? Um, 15. Oh. Uh, what state am I in? Uh, decline. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And we're going to start this movie in its very first second with the producer, science denialist Mark Moreno, throwing away his mask like there's note cards in a movie about a Little debate club that could. <laughs> That's right. This movie went back and inserted a scene where they shat on surgical masks just to get the anti-science bingo card or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> to start their science documentary. Not a good start. I don't even understand this, like, this notion of masks suck, but I'm wearing one before I take it off. Like, what, what, if you didn't want to wear a mask because you're an asshole, why would you have it on and then throw it away? He's going freestyle with data. <laughs> well, what I love is that he's like, well, if you hate the shutdown from COVID, they're going to do a climate shutdown. Didn't really have time to flesh out this baseless accusation but i mean if you're watching this movie you're gonna buy it am i right you're gonna buy it they have to shove covid in here fast yeah. and then all these people are like mm -hmm. yeah we buy it we totally buy it yeah apparently covid is a conspiracy to keep land above water and save the environment <laughs> moving on oh and what a move on we are going to do because we're going to start our movie again with mini AOC. It's so stupid. <sighs> and the only thing less funny than right wing slams on AOC is the fact that a parent is forcing a child to do it. <laughs> yeah. I know, that poor girl. And this is supposed to be negative. They're supposed to be like doing a parody of AOC, but it's not working. She's adorable. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's really endearing. The thing that's frustrating is that they make her like, say the word like multiple like times, but they've scripted her perfectly. And it's obvious that she's <laughs> struggling to read the script. <laughs> she's not an actress. She's probably just somebody's daughter. Very much. Yeah, that they asked to do this. So it doesn't sound natural, which makes the whole bit backfire. Yeah. No, it's... Ugh. 
It's gross. It's super duper awkward. But yeah, they're, they're trying to make fun of the Green New Deal here. They point out that the Green New Deal would cost $93 trillion. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's it's a, a news person interviewing AOC being like, oh, it's going to cost $93 trillion. What do we even get for that? Oh, existence. Oh, well, <laughs> that's, not, that's not terrible. Oh, yeah. We just we're just not going to melt into the surface of the earth. That's, oh, we'll see. that's what you know, because I plan to take it with me. What? <laughs> all right. Just negotiating the price of existence across the table with pieces of paper. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> so, yeah, we're doing this. It is weird, though, how much that little girl looks like AOC. Oh, she, like, yeah. Really absolutely. looks Apparently. like her. She's mm-hmm. adorable. The best. Yeah. Yeah. So, with our second intro out of the way, it's time to roll the credits, which might as well read, Climate Hustle 2 is brought to you by the literal phenomenon of climate change, all right? (laughs) This this movie is produced by C-Fact, which is funded by Peabody Energy and Murray Energy. Whole company. Oh, of course. Now bankrupt. Well, it was funded by them, but now it's funded by a donor-advised fund. What? Right, which is fancy talk for energy companies that would like to hide their direct support of things <laughs> right. like this. But don't worry, this donor advised funds stated goal, just in case you were worried that this was too shady, is to quote, safeguard the intent of libertarian and conservative donors, end quote. Oh my <laughs> God. That's worse. That's somehow yeah, worse. So much worse. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's like starting a cult, but like you put in your motto that there's definitely weird fuck stuff going on, right? Yeah, the exactly. Point, We're not a cult, cult. <laughs> but we definitely are all fucking the cult leader. <laughs> this is a confusing metaphor. I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> you were saying it was negative or positive. Regardless, the next thing that we see on the screen is no carbon credits were harmed in the making of this film. <laughs> I mean, everyone... In the credits was harmed, but no carbon <laughs> credits were harmed. I was also harmed by watching. Yeah, this everyone film, watched it. Everyone. Oh God, was... how is that something to be proud of? Oh, also, C Fact was created to find free market solutions to environmental problems. That's what carbon credits are. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> No, it just reminds me of that study. And now it's a pretty old study, like 10 or 15 years, where they took people who were avowed conservatives versus people who were avowed liberals. And they gave them the option to buy a compact fluorescent light bulb or an incandescent light bulb. And most people chose the light bulb that was cheaper. Well, the other one was $93 trillion. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So they put the price tag on it and people go, okay, I want the cheaper bulb. But then when they put a tag on it that said something, and I'm I'm totally misquoting this study because it's been so long, but something that said like, this bulb is better for the environment. Even though it was cheaper, a certain percentage of conservatives chose the one that was not better for the environment. What? (laughs) Like to make a point. It's crazy. It's like, like it's a point of pride. Environmental spite buying. Yes, this is yeah. actually a phenomenon. I mean, that wow. study might might have surprised me any week except for Friday, November sixth, right when we're recording this episode. Kara. We just did a a national survey on whether or not we would put the eco friendly light bulb up our asses to bone the lips. So, turns out about thirty percent. Yeah, it turns right. out half the country was like, well, I'm racist. <laughs> <laughs> and so speaking of that. racist. We have to go to the courts to figure out if we put the light bulb up our ass or not. <laughs> and speaking of racist, now we get our very first shot of Kevin Sorbo, and he is looking rough. <laughs> so, wait, remind me who Kevin Sorbo is. Why does he matter? Hercules, the legend journey continued. I don't know, Hercules from the 90s, from like, so like but bad why TV. Is he, why is he so involved in all this garbage? Okay, so I'm so excited to share this story with you, Kara. What I want to do is listen to all of God Awful Movies, episode 271, back to one, and then back from there to 272. For anybody who's joining us for the first time this week, we're going to get some review. So K-Sorbs was Hercules in the 90s. You know that. Mm -hmm. He guest appeared on Xena a couple of times, a far superior show. (laughs) But he was a wooey Hollywood person, right? Classic L.A. wooey liberal. But then one time when he was at the chiropractor, they cricked his neck too hard and he had a stroke. Holy shit. While he had that stroke. Yeah. 
while he was recovering from that stroke, he I ran out of that. I can't tell if Eli's making up this story. No, this is true. <laughs> while he was recovering from the stroke, he ran out of that sweet, sweet Hercules money. So he decided to make up that he had seen God or had a near death experience or something vaguely Christian to like do a book tour or write a book or be in a right. movie or whatever. What he didn't count on is that Christians have no celebrities before him. All they had was fucking Dean Cain. So they jumped on that shit and put him in every Christian movie from 1989 <laughs> until whenever yep. the fuck his most recent movie came out. And he has been the Danny Trejo of Christian cinema ever since. <laughs> wow. And apologies to Danny Trejo for saying that, by the way. I know he's a nice right, guy. He's great. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> But for whatever reason, he now looks like he's been listening to every physical description we've ever made of him on this show <laughs> since we started this show on a loop. <laughs> he's having a rough couple of decades. Um, nope. But yeah, he's basically going to introduce this movie by saying, everyone says we're wrong. Cue a bunch of clips of everyone saying this movie is wrong. Yeah. Right. And I'm just nodding along. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> true. That's true also. Uh-huh. Oh. A whole bunch of news sources that you're showing. Yeah, a lot of legitimate <laughs> scientists that Disagree we're here with you. <laughs> So yeah, then he says, they tell us the world is going to end. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, we tell you that too, but it's obviously going to be a sky wizard making the stars fall out of the sky. Read our book. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then he points out that tons of scientists are actually skeptical about the science Five of them. It's the these five. And they show us, like, the five scientists that they were able to find. None of whom side. are climate scientists. Well, that's not true. There's like one retired climate scientist. <laughs> but most of them are economists. Yeah. yeah. That tells you something right there. <laughs> exactly. All right. So now we're going to cut over to Mark Morano outside of the Palace of Versailles in France because... <laughs> Well, honestly, because he wanted this movie to pay for his vacation to France. Right. Wait, was that the actual Palace of Versailles or was it a green screen? I can't tell. I think he was actually he outside the real. Palace of Versailles. Yeah. And why did he dress up in a costume? <laughs> because he wanted to use his French king costume. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just been in the plastic for years now. <laughs> Waiting. Pulling it out. Right. But again, the point that he's trying to make is that like climate elites are just like Louis the 14th, you know, that familiar touchstone to climate deniers. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Speaking of which, um, let's talk to Margaret Thatcher's science advisor to see Lord Christopher Monckton. <laughs> oh my God. He's science. so scary, you guys. And like, I, Terrifying. you know, I'm not the one on the show who is going to berate somebody for their appearance, <clears throat> Eli. We will. Um, <laughs> It's and brand. I really, like, it is a thing. Like, I don't want to be throwing ad hominems left and right, but like, I was made uncomfortable looking at him. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't put him on screen. He, like, when they say he has a, a face for radio, <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy is, he looks like Quasimodo, legit like Quasimodo. Literally Quasimodo. <laughs> Why didn't they do it in front of Notre Dame? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that would have been apropos. He was so scary. Yeah, he was scared. Like, the eyes are going at like one. His left eye was in my apartment at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Came out of the screen like the ring. It was fucking terrifying. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> and I love too that like the the takeaway of the whole movie, the whole point that they're trying to make is not just that climate change is a hoax and that you're being lied to by the liberals, but that the purpose of the quote hustle is to establish a new world order where there is a global government that controls the economy. And they keep talking about it as though it is a climate monarchy. And I yep. love that the first example of a guy to denigrate the idea of a climate monarchy is a guy who literally works for the <laughs> monarchy. He's a lord. <laughs> Like, what is this? Lord Slavery Feudalism is here to tell you about Brad Pitt's secret agenda. <laughs> yep. And they ask him directly. They're like, serious question. Is the UN Secretary General going to be a Sun King? And he's like, yep, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. And then they show us a bunch of actors. And apparently the claim is that actors are stupid. And then they're like, back to you, Kevin Sorbo. Tell us more about this. <laughs> 
(laughs) (laughs) I want it to be one of those like John Oliver interstitials where they put the big flaming stamp on it and go, irony. (laughs) Every every time. Yeah. And when we're talking to Kevin Sorbo, by the way, he says, it's, you know, these fancy Hollywood elites love to tell us not to spend too much carbon, but that's kind of like when Marie Antoinette said, let them eat cake. And (laughs) No, I love not. I love the Ouroboros <laughs> of stupid here because one, it's like the opposite of when she said that. <laughs> yep. And yeah. two, she never said that. So Didn't it's it's that. a beautiful layer cake of not knowing things. <laughs> <laughs> that is like the quote of the show, I think. It's a beautiful <laughs> layer cake of not knowing things. <laughs> <laughs> Climate hustle too. A beautiful Let them eat layer, layer cake. cake of not knowing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and for more on layer cakes of not knowing, we're now going to talk to Mark Stein, who's the author of A Disgrace to the Profession. But for a second there, I thought the movie was just letting us know that Mark Stein is both an author and a disgrace to his profession, which I found refreshingly <laughs> honest. Oh, yeah. I love the chirons in this movie because it'll be like so and so. Professor Emeritus of whatever, author of over 200 peer-reviewed journals. (laughs) Like, they love to be like, this guy's serious. He's a real person. But also banned by Google and academia, (laughs) somehow still has 200 studies. It's it's complicated. Right. Author of 200, (laughs) retracted peer-reviewed article. (laughs) I love, too, that they're all former members of. You're like, hmm, I wonder why. (laughs) And so the claim here is that, like, all right, we're talking about the UN becoming a monarchy and having the Sun King and reducing carbon in a monarchy would be bad. Right. I mean, I don't get it. Part of that scenario is bad. So, yes, <laughs> but like the monarchy, like, reducing carbon during a Holocaust has negative elements in the weird scenario <laughs> you set up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So now. We're going to shit on Al Gore. Oh, yeah. And the way we're going to shit on this is Al Gore says to reduce your carbon footprint. But does he do that? Yeah, right. So because Al Gore sometimes flies southwest (laughs) 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 and then is like, yeah, I buy carbon credits every time I fly. They're like, (laughs) it's funny because they want to be mad about the fact that he flies and then they want to make fun of him for buying cars. Like they want to just not give him any outs, basically. (laughs) Also, they're making a movie about how climate change is fake and now they're caring about carbon footprints. (laughs) You're right. Right. Doom, irony. (laughs) (laughs) They also, for this section, they pull a clip from a hit piece YouTube video about Al Gore, created by the National Center for Policy Research, which is a conservative think tank. So we now have a conservative think tank's YouTube video inside an oil company's propaganda movie. (laughs) The the layers of knowledge get deeper and deeper and lower and lower. (laughs) And you're probably thinking, okay, what does Jim Inhofe think? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly. I feel like what they did is they were in a room And they had, you know, the little note cards like producers do where they have all the different beats of the movie and they're trying to arrange them on the screen or on the wall saying, okay, what do we open with? Then what comes next? And they're literally like, what has the most impact? Shit on Al Gore, mini AOC, Jim Inhofe's snowball. Like there's too much good (laughs) shit. I don't know where to start. (laughs) And it's nice to see Jim again. I'm also pleased to announce he is visibly rotting from the inside based on his teeth. So that's (laughs) cool. And James Inhofe is describing himself as the proletariat. Weird world. Uh, Weird world this movie creates. The U.S. senator is the proletariat. (laughs) And scientists are the elites. Yep. Yep, yep. Makes sense. Yep, totally checks. But his point is that Leonardo DiCaprio also talks about climate change, but he has been on a private jet and a big boat. So there. (laughs) We get a cut from the Meredith Vieira show, which appears to be a somehow less likable view. And one of the hosts says, you can't promote weight loss and eat a cheeseburger. And I just wrote my notes. Yes. Yes, you can. (laughs) (laughs) Cheeseburgers are keto friendly. You could just do just. Eat the burger. That's very, (laughs) very all or nothing thinking. Yeah. And I love this, just this idea that if there's a human being on the planet who uses carbon, but then says that we don't like 
our dependence on carbon, that they are hypocrites. As if they have any individual control over living in a carbon economy. Right. So they're trying to change that. Like, you get that, right? They don't want it to be this way. But until it's no longer this way, they have to consume carbon. Right. Like, you can't fly to work on the Paris Climate Accord via electric plane because they don't exist yet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they they seem to make the point in this section that if the Sierra Club meant it, they would have paddled their way to the Paris (laughs) Climate Accords. Damn it, paddled. I know, I love, the Sierra Club guy is literally like, sometimes you got to fly, dude. (laughs) Like, sorry. (laughs) Like, like we're buying our carbon credits. What do you want? Sometimes you got to fly. Yeah, I mean, DiCaprio wants higher taxes on rich people like himself, but then he goes and makes more money? Hypocrite. No, that's stupid. (laughs) Obviously not. We also meet two more of our experts in this section. John Coleman, founder of the Weather Channel and CGI-aged Alfred Newman on the side of a milk carton. (laughs) And also Brian Sussman, a former weatherman who doesn't think climate change is real. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently his brain got irradiated by all that green screen. How did you keep straight all of the old white men in this movie? Like they all <laughs> blended together to me. This I movie not. is just a series of talking head interviews with old crusty white men covered in dandruff. Like that yep. was the weirdest part. <laughs> mm-hmm. And just blends together. And then it's just interspersed with cuts of like charismatic, interesting people speaking truth to power. Yep. <laughs> like that's all it is. It's old white men who are like literally like you said, rotting from the inside. (laughs) And and like interesting smart people. And then they're like, look at the interesting smart people. They suck. That's the whole movie. (laughs) And next up, we have gingivitis to make fun of Angelina Jolie. Yes, the disease, gingivitis. (laughs) And Kevin jumps in here with, with a great prover that they don't really believe it. He goes, you know who took real action? Noah, when he built the ark. You know, in the Bible, <laughs> that true story, yep. that's the guy who meant it. Yeah, he brings up when God told Noah that the flood was imminent. And I was like, <laughs> interesting. It's a highly respected flood in the field of floods. Eminent flood. flood. Emeritus. <laughs> yeah. You know, he read that straight off the prompter. <laughs> sure. Did. There's no way they had imminent. No, he, they're all done. Yeah, they wrote imminent. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Uh, So now we're going to cut over to Bill Nye, who, if you'll remember from the first movie, was criticized for wearing a lab coat. But this is modern losing his shit, Bill Nye, who I'm a big fan of. I just want to say. (laughs) Yeah, they actually showed clips. I don't think it was this early in the movie, but they showed clips from Bill Nye Saves the World. And there was a small part of me because I was on that show. I was a correspondent on that show. (laughs) So there's a small part of me that was like, ooh, am I going to be in Climate Hustle too? (laughs) Oh, that would be so cool. But no, I wasn't. You got to get those residuals. Got to get those residuals. (laughs) We can PayPal you the $5. (laughs) Thank you. I actually do still get residuals from um, from Bill Nye Saves. From Bill Nye, okay. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty cool. (laughs) This is also where we meet my favorite expert of the movie, uh, Dr. Richard Lindzen. He's an atmospheric physicist. So stupid. All of his old colleagues at MIT got together to tell him what an asshole he is. <laughs> but you know they love writing MIT like really big in the Chiron every time he's on the screen. Banned from the campus of MIT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that part's really small. <laughs> it's like the it's like the OJ Simpson book, right? If I did it, <laughs> like, I did it. Okay, is this the guy who said that carbon dioxide is the building block of all yes, life? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, it it's carbon. He I means think. carbon, and that's fucking incredible. And, I mean, oxygen <laughs> is one of them too. It's one of the big elements. In life. I don't think carbon dioxide makes up everything. But he's like carbon dioxide, building block of all life. You want to murder all the trees? They breathe it. <laughs> oh, I'm so over that argument. It's so infuriating. It's like when people talk about how we shouldn't, like, eat chemicals. <laughs> yep. You know? And you're just like, God, you need to go back to seventh grade and retake intro to biology. Apps. Wouldn't the trees can't. be all, like, happy and fat right now, if that's how it works? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, it hurts my brain. Oh, we need some more morbidly obese trees. Yeah. So <laughs> now K-Sorps is going to hop back on and he's going to tell us about the, in his words, 
so-called scientific body, the IPCC. Right. That's their name. (laughs) So-called? Is that up for dispute? The name? That's the name. Weird air quote. The International Panel on Climate. No, just say it regular. That's the the word. And so the idea here, or at least the argument here, is that the IPCC is actually like this cabal that's trying to take over global government. Yep. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Sun King. Yep, Yep. Sun King. (laughs) They go to Ross McKittrick, a professor of economics at the University of Guelph. Sorry, uh, professor of what? Economics. (laughs) Okay, not climate science. Mm -mm. (laughs) University of Guelph? Is that what you said? Pretty sure he just made that up on the spot. They were like, and where do you teach? And he was like, Well, he just he just coughed and then they like wrote that down. He's like, Well, oh yeah. <laughs> Too late, it's on the title card. Yeah. Their mascot is the Griff, by the way. <laughs> That's for real. The Guelph Griff. Yep. No. I'm serious. But the point that he's making is if you put 400 economists in a room and give them the same data, they all have different answers. But if you put all climatologists in a room with the same data, they would all agree. And that is bad for the climatologists. It shows the economists don't have an agenda because they're all just guessing. Right. So so he thinks that this. Oh, it's there's so much to unpack here. It's so painful. Like we don't have time to talk about the depths of how the scientific method works on the show. But I think that one thing that's so easy to point to is that we know that reality exists, right? (laughs) Reality is a thing. (laughs) And then what scientists do is they model reality. And we can never get it perfect. Our models are never perfect, but they're relatively close. And different fields of science are better because they're able to collect data that's a little bit cleaner. They're better at modeling reality. So like my field, psychology, is, which is a social science, we have a harder time modeling reality. So we have to be a lot stricter with our statistical analyses because there's so much variability among people. Whereas, let's say, physics or math can model reality in a much kind of cleaner way. Or lie. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> so economics is a very, it's like psychology in a way. It's very loaded. And that's where you do see a lot of agendas in the room. And these models are models that are based on a lot of variability. And I'm not saying that climate models don't vary, but the data are the data. And it's not like we've, just because we've only been collecting data for the past few hundred years, like as human beings on Earth, it doesn't mean that we don't have sources of data from ice cores and tree rings, you know, like paleontological sources of data that we can put into our models. So basically the argument this guy is making is when you put a bunch of climatologists in a room and they all say the same thing, it's because they're making a pretty damn good model. You put 400 economists in a room and they all have different answers. It's because their model's not very strong, so they have to interpret it in wildly different ways. He's making our fucking argument. <laughs> so Sounds like you're saying climate science is a religion. That's what <laughs> that I is, That's what he's saying because he doesn't understand science, but he really gets religion. <laughs> that's what that is. Oh, So now it's time for them to debunk some individual claims of climate scientists and people who believe in climate change, starting with whether or not 2019 was the hottest year ever. And ha, idiots, it was the second hottest year ever. (laughs) (laughs) That's their argument. Uh, This is the thing. So I, I kind of dug into this a little because this is a common argument that you hear from climate deniers. The 1930s were way hotter than 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. You want to know where this argument comes from? I don't really, but I guess <laughs> American data only. Ooh, because it sounds you, like a, an unbiased research institution. <laughs> yeah, because if you're one of these old white men in this movie, America is the only thing that fucking matters to you, apparently. That's amazing. They, in their title, they think data has a nationality. That's phenomenal. <laughs> right. So here's the thing. 1934 was the hottest year on record in the USA, historically. Actually, 2012 became the hottest year, and then we've seen some hot years since then. But 1934 was the hottest year on record only in the USA. But the USA only makes up 2% of the globe. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, that that's where they got that from? Yeah, yeah, the hottest years on record globally have all been within this decade, this and the past decade. But they're only looking at American data. Okay, so... Like, that's not okay. So U.S. warming is a hoax. <laughs> <laughs> no, but even still, it's not the hottest... Even 1934 is still not the hottest year. It's like the second hottest year. And it's a random blip because the Dust Bowl was happening. Like, there was all this anthropogenic change to the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> that caused the climate to spike <laughs> locally. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's, that's, it's amazing. That's an upsetting backstory to that mm -hmm, whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting more about Dr. Richard Lindzen here, right? He, he's the guy <laughs> who's presenting this. Yeah. I just want to add a few more details about him. <laughs> he headlined the Koch Brothers Science Conference from 1991, pro-fossil fuel industry conference. Yeah, you guys heard him say science in quotes again, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Lindzen also had his work funded by the Cato Institute and Peabody Energy, the coal company that Eli mentioned earlier. <laughs> he compared climate science to how we used to think eugenics was great. And then we're going to figure out that it's not. It's like Galileo. And he collects oriental rugs. I also learned that. That was weird. <laughs> Was that like in his Wikipedia page? It was literally at the bottom of his Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was what? <laughs> like, did he add that? Like, who the uh, fuck added <laughs> that to his Wikipedia? I feel like he added that. <laughs> Must have added that. Him. He's like, I'm yeah. worldly. <laughs> Tell them about my collection of plush, racistly named rugs. <laughs> <laughs> Now that they took away my sugar baby's original boxes, I only have my <laughs> rugs from the Orient. Also, one other thing about Lindzen, in 2004, he said he'd take bets on the global average temperature being actually lower by 2024. He, he thinks it's like a 50-50 on warmer versus colder and he would take bets. Scientist James Annan tried to take that bet with him, but Lindzen said he was misquoted and he wanted like 50 to 1 odds to take the bet, which... You're lying. That's, <laughs> yeah. By definition, if that's the odds you need, you're a liar. Right, because if it's a 50-50 in your mind. <laughs> that's a, you, I would you don't say, what is that, odds. a one-to-one? -one? Yeah, that's one-to-one, <laughs> -one, I'm pretty sure. That's, that's a coin flip. Bet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we meet a couple other experts in this section. None of them say anything particularly important. But but the thing I kept thinking to myself is I would be so much more convinced by any of these guys if they didn't all look so much like they were melting. Right. <laughs> Just everyone looks more <laughs> like they're melting than the last. It's a real, a real bummer. <laughs> We also get that guy who fucking loves carbon dioxide. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got the button. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the button. <laughs> He's yelling about how it's not polluted. Environmentalism is racist. It's not pollution. Carbon <laughs> dioxide's great. You guys are mean. I love that when they say, like, it's not pollution because they, they're just appealing to these sort of base instincts that people have where when they're like, how can carbon dioxide be pollution? Plants breathe it. And it's like, do you know, it's it's back to the chemical <laughs> argument, right? Like, do you know what pollution means? Just because it's not like gray and sooty. Right. <laughs> Just because <laughs> carbon dioxide isn't also plastic <laughs> doesn't yeah. mean it's not Pollution. We breathe oxygen. If you fire oxygen into our face like 100 miles an hour, <laughs> it, it'll poison you, I'm sure. <laughs> it's just amazing. Like, they just gloss over the entire greenhouse gas effect. They don't deconstruct any of the actual science. They just have people going, nah, uh And then they, like, <laughs> drop the mic. That's yep. it. That's the movie. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's all keep in mind that Elements and compounds matter. All the elements and compounds matter. That's a good woke message. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break while I call my bookie to make a bet about something. And then we'll be back with more Kara being a very obvious chill for big data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good evening and welcome to Crossfire. I'm Tom Huckle. Tonight, climate change, hoax or hot button issue. And joining me is climate change skeptic, Ron Brown. Thanks for having me, Tom. Great. Thanks for being here. And we also have honest science communicator, Kara Santa Maria. So tell us, Kara, what do you mean by honest science communicator? Well, Tom, that's my thing. I do science communication, but without all the nice talk to make it palatable. All right. 
Interested to see how that works out. This show is a bad idea, and you should feel ashamed. Okay, that, that's, that's probably valid. So, Ron, you tell us that climate change is a hoax made up by liberals to gain political control. That's right, Tom. Look, nobody knows whether or not CO2 is a factor in climate warming. But what we do know is that... This the... guy is paid off by oil companies. Sorry, what? I don't know who he is or what he is, but he's all full of oil money. I... I, I am not. Really? I am not. Let me see your wallet. Uh, no, no. Give it to give ow, it to me. Ow, get off. Get, get off me. Ma give Ms. it to Santa me. Maria, please, please. Uh, uh. See, look right here. A check in his wallet from Big Oil for, quote, being a sellout piece of shit. Weird that they title it that way, but I told you. She punched me in my penis. Yeah, so what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> I felt it with my knuckles and it was tiny. Oh, okay. <gasps> All right, I'm going to go to the green room and stuff all the cliff bars in my purse. We good here? Uh, yes, small. I guess. Not small. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And as if I can't hear the thermometer, la, 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 wasn't <laughs> stupid enough as an argument. <laughs> now we're going to debunk the existence of extreme weather. So... Kara, any thoughts on this? Or is your entire state on fire again? I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't hear you through the ash in the air. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, the title card said facts on this uh, part. So I buy it. Yeah. I'm told it's facts. <laughs> yeah, the title card here is facts, extreme weather. And basically, they just bring out a bunch of pseudoscientists to be like, the weather is not extreme. Talk to me when a tornado can skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they even show us like a congressional hearing where a scientist is getting grilled by some Republican senator being like, are there more hurricanes yesterday? It, today, are there more hurricanes? Is there a hurricane in this room right now? No, gavel. That's it. <laughs> so stupid. So stupid. I just wanted Chris Farley to run in. Yo, soy El Nino. <laughs> Break yeah. up the meeting. No. So with that debunked... Right, like what did we even do with that? We're just like, move on. <laughs> yeah, it's done. So with that debunked, we're going to talk about whether the sea level is rising, which they'll introduce with a slide Trumpianly titled, Facts, Sea Level Rise. <laughs> oh, God. With, with a Sharpie showing a lower sea level. <laughs> yeah. And superimposed on top of the rising sea level. You, you just drew a black line under... I can see the sea above it. What do you... Okay. You would think that title cards would reflect their argument like it would say facts the sea level is not rising <laughs> or facts no extreme weather <laughs> you'd think a lot of things carrie you'd think a lot of things i would i would yeah but basically they're saying here like there's no way the sea level's rising we'd have somebody actually says this we'd have to invent new laws of physics for the ocean to rise. Yes. Nope. What? Fucking gravity goes down, idiots. Obviously, <laughs> how would that even happen? <laughs> I just don't understand how they can like look at maps and like look at readings <laughs> that show like without a shadow of a doubt that the sea level is rising. <laughs> like go to low-lying countries and see where the shoreline is measurably and then go like nope, not happening. Nope, your house is underwater, but that sh that was just, that's an anomaly. <laughs> yeah. you, you shouldn't have built your house in the underwater. <laughs> it was weird that you decided to build it there. What I love about this section is they, they get their experts mixed up with their other experts because the first guy goes, it's physically impossible. We need to invent new laws of physics. And then the next guy goes, I mean, it's been 6,000 years and it's only been a few feet, right? I mean, what are we going to do? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> There's so many times... So Kara's giving us like actual answers about these things, but so many times they'd claim something and I'd be like, I don't really like, I know that's wrong, but I don't know exactly how it's wrong. So I would do like the most casual possible Google of the question <laughs> and Google would be like, yeah, man, it's fucking rising. What are you talking about? Yeah, right here. So clear. Noah, global sea level has been rising over the past century and the rate has increased in recent decades. In 2014, <laughs> it was 2.6 inches above the 93 average and the highest annual average in the satellite record. Sea level continues to rise at about one-eighth of an inch per year. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess yep. we invented new laws of physics. Yeah, yeah that's apparently. Cool. That's exciting. Excited to yeah. see those. So now we get a slide that says, 
facts, polar bears, and polar caps. And and honestly, if you had asked me if this segment of the movie was going to debunk the existence of both, I would have given you even money. <laughs> Well, true, because do you think any of these climate deniers are also flat earthers? Because if they are, then Absolutely. it's an ice wall, not a polar cap. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> flat earthers don't believe in the North and South Poles, do they? Oh, man, I want one who's both. Because that Venn diagram has to cross over. Probably a bunch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like climate denial, flat earth, vaccine denial, and maybe like, yeah, coronavirus hoaxers. I bet you there's a lot of people who fall into those. Not a lot, but like interesting people. <laughs> we got to get that Venn diagram fighting with itself in the I want different that, regions. I want to see that movie. I was going to say, in the very center of that Venn diagram is Marsha's show, Be Reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Just no. the same guests. Um, and <laughs> one point I want to touch on about this polar bear section. So their point is, polar bears are fucking fine, all right? They're... But one of the guys is like, oh, yeah, no, when the when the polar ice caps melt, it's not bad for the polar bears. They just go on land and eat gophers. Yeah, what was he talking about? <laughs> and like, then they turn into regular bears, he said. <laughs> yes, he said that. He said they eat gophers and then they probably turn into like uh, brown bears. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, who, what was his expertise? Oh, Colors. Hey, who the fuck? Knew? This is one of their myriad fucking physics yeah. majors from right, wealth right. universities off campus <laughs> satellite. Um, I don't think this guy was a biologist. Mm. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know why I felt the need to reference this stand up multiple times in the last week, which I shouldn't do because he got me too. But it reminds me of that time in the Louis C.K. stand up where he's talking about his friend who like, needs to go all night. And so he's like, oh, if I run out of cum, I'll just like drink just milk. Drink some milk. Yeah. <laughs> and your body's like, going to be like, oh yeah, that's perfect. Just uh, run that right through. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> it's like, where are you getting your science? Or, you can't just make it up on the spot because it seems reasonable to you. <laughs> like, like a grizzly bear is not just a polar bear that like ran out of food and had to that go. ate a brown thing and turned brown. <laughs> Not just a polar bear that can't catch a cab in Manhattan. There's a whole thing. <laughs> so, what okay. color does he think seals are, I wonder? <laughs> now that I think about it. So do you guys want to know why this is a complicated issue and why climate denialists love to jump on the bandwagon with the, with the polar bear thing? Damn right. Okay. I'm not. <laughs> okay. So polar bears proceed anyway. <laughs> are in danger of extinction. We know this. Like, this is true. The confusion comes in because there are, A, 19 different recognized subpopulations, and the numbers of specific polar bear subpopulations are a little bit hard to track. We know that there are probably about 20 to 25,000 polar bears in existence, and we know that most of the 19 subpopulations are in decline or are stable. Actually, one sub pop is increasing and some of them we don't we don't know what's going on because we don't You're have voting data. in Pennsylvania, I heard. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, shit's changing fast. Um, <laughs> but the main takeaway here that they love to point to is that they like to say, look, their numbers are increasing. Their numbers in are increasing. Now, this is a very kind of classic Trumpian argument. Like when he says, look, unemployment is going down. Because it tanked first. <laughs> now it's yeah, rebounding. Exactly. So in 1973, there was the International Agreement on the Conservation of Polar Bears, which restricted and banned hunting with certain polar bears. And so, of course, their numbers started to bounce back after that. And they love to just look at that data and go, their numbers are going up. Climate change can't be real. And it's like, yeah, when people stopped killing them, less of them were dead after that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but on average, when you take a, a bigger look, they are heavily threatened. And climate change is very much one of the reasons that they are threatened. Yeah. Also, polar bears wasn't the end of our argument, I don't think. That wasn't the start <laughs> and finish of it. It wasn't our end game. No. So now Kevin's going to hop back on the screen and he's going to say, yeah, you know, the climate elites, they tell you there's a crisis. But as you can see, we have literally fives of unrelated scientists who say they're wrong. <laughs> well, five. five. <laughs> One. They told us to shut up and stop asking questions, which if you think about it, <laughs> right. is a lot like 1984. <laughs> I 
can't. I can't. This is this is the part where like flames started coming out of my ears. Yes, now the movie paid for by the oil lobby to lie about the numbers on a thermostat <sighs> is going to tell us about how the other side is just like the villains in George Orwell's fiction. Listen, there's 19 subpopulations of polar bears. 19, 19 what? 84. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. And we're going to use this metaphor for every scene in the rest of the movie. Oh, yes, the we rest will. of the movie is just clips from 1984 superimposed on them claiming that basically the global cabal that wants to have a new world order economy is Big Brother. Yeah. Like this is the argument, right? Like, mm-hmm. and so people <laughs> who literally thought that two plus two equals four need to now just sit down and shut up and understand that when AOC and basically every legitimate progressive world leader <laughs> tell yep. you that climate change is a, a real problem, really what they're saying is two plus two equals five and suck it up and believe it. Yeah. And there's two things I want to touch on here. The first is, this is where we get the first appearance of my favorite person in the movie. Yes, even more than Lord Humbleton, Serfdom <laughs> Mockton, <laughs> Dr. Bill Gray. Wait, is oh. this Dandruff guy? The, no, this is <laughs> chocolate on the side of Whoa. his mouth guy. Oh, it's probably also Dandruff mouth. guy. <laughs> no, but but Dandruff guy, in you remember in the fleece zippy, he's Absol- got a yeah. lot of Dandruff. No, this oh, guy Dandruff is Dandruff guy with the cloud. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, this isn't. That's not him. No, this guy's amazing with the chocolate on the side of his mouth. It's like they caught him on the way out of lunch. Absolutely. <laughs> and they were like, hey, can we talk to you for 30 seconds? And then they just took every second of that 30 second interview and put mm-hmm. it in the movie. Absolutely. And, the, the, and he has chocolate distractingly <laughs> on the side of his mouth. I am a father of a five month old. And my son watched this movie with me and was like, dude, that guy needs to clean that shit off his face. <laughs> No, it's now. If you'll excuse me, I'm gonna put these carrots back in my hair. But (laughs) that guy's embarrassing himself. This guy. (laughs) It's like you all remember being in elementary or middle school and having a teacher who had like the the shit that would just collect at the the corner of their mouth Mm -hmm. in the lecture. Yeah, and you and it's all you could focus on. Like it's all you could for like an hour. You could leave class and go, "What did you learn today?" And you'd be like, "Oh, spittle." Oh, we'd be watching it and we'd have like over-unders on like at what minute during the class <laughs> yeah. it would fly off and everybody yes. would go nuts and the teacher wouldn't know what had happened because yep. the spill had flied off. <laughs> That's this guy. Some of us had won a bet. <laughs> but we're going to run through a few 1984-esque scenarios here. My favorite of which is Ted Cruz trying to <laughs> oh, yeah. ask the climate expert the hard questions. So this is, this is also one of my favorite parts of the movie. Yes. Ted Cruz is trying to like grill a scientist again in a Senate hearing. And he's like, okay, well, if two plus two was found to be five by math, would you admit it? And the guy's like, you're stupid. The guy literally is like two plus two is four. And he's like, no, but if it was five, wouldn't you come clean about that? And he's like, sorry, I'm going to stop you right there. You're stupid. Yeah. Two plus two is four. (laughs) Motherfucker. He literally repeats. It's amazing. Yeah. He repeats the question. And then the guy repeats his like perfect answer. Like (laughs) 97% of scientists agree. Climate change is real. So no, he he might as well be like, Ted, I know that you're asking me if I would change my mind in the face of science so that when I am done talking, you can lie about whether the science is different. So I'm, I'm not going to let you do that, Ted. You understand that, right? And he's like, Homo says what? What? No, Ted. (laughs) Damn it. No. Yeah, Yeah. it's like when people, It's. do you remember that interview with Fauci? I can't remember the journalist that was interviewing him. And he was really trying to get him to say some things where he's like, but what's it like when Trump, you know, disagrees with you? And what's it like? And finally, he's like, dude, what do you want me to say? (laughs) Like, come Come on, on, don't make me lose my job, man. But just to be clear, one more time about Ted Cruz here. His level of misunderstanding of, well, everything, but Big Brother especially is amazing because the argument he's trying to make is like, oh, well, science can change. You can find something new and now you have to change your opinion. But like his example was if the a priori fabric of the universe changed (laughs) and two plus two equaled five and I proved it, it's impossible. Would you believe me? Unreal. He's a senator. And it's like. Pretty much a lot of other shit would be upside down if you could prove that two plus... Like, I think this is the least of our worries if that's what's going on out there. Oh, 
And there's one other thing in this section. They explain the problem that they have with the 97% number is that they didn't name all of the scientists in the 97% who agree with them. No, they were literally like um, 97% of qualified scientists, 97% of expert scientists, like all of the descriptors that have ever been used, which basically are emphasizing the people who are not pseudoscientists, <laughs> like legitimate scientists, and they're like, but what do you mean by legitimate? <laughs> not you. Right. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about whether scientists are being intimidated and threatened, just like in 1984. You remember how in 1984, the people who disagreed with Big Brother were allowed to make millions of dollars and put out their own bullshit documentaries? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like that oh it's so like it, it's almost like these people saw trump be so successful at the art of the deal like they saw him go i know what i'm gonna do anytime anybody levies an argument against me that's legitimate i'm just gonna go i know you are but what am i and they were like holy <laughs> shit it works for the president we can all do it now with impunity this works on 38 percent of the country guys we have been working too hard yeah we were doing the rubber glue thing yeah that's good that's, that's what this whole fucking movie is is they're like oh it's just like in 1984 and we're like you know you're the bad guy in 1984 right <laughs> <laughs> like you mixed it up a little bit oh this is also where they bring up that in canada they will throw you in jail for denying climate change which is like what no this guy was just he just was served a summons for like appearing in he got a lawsuit yeah that's not the same thing as being thrown in jail <laughs> whatever i wish he got thrown in jail yeah this is a civil suit right like yeah. <laughs> what? That's so silly but sorbo is making this point by standing behind the bars of some kind of jail that oh, he's yeah. found <laughs> <laughs> he's like Nobody actually went to jail, so I'm going to make you think they did because right. I'm at Alcatraz. <laughs> Needed a visual aid for us to get jail as a concept. <laughs> but where the fuck is this beach that also has an abandoned <laughs> medieval jail in it? I just told That's you crazy. it's Alcatraz. Alcatraz. <laughs> Withdrawn. There you go. Answered. <laughs> Got Sorbo's school trip all taken care of. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wouldn't that be great, though, actually, if it was just like his his teenage kid's school trip and he agreed <laughs> to be there? We chaperone. see them loading onto a bus in the background. <laughs> He's like eating a Twinkie and like a ham sandwich yeah. with a milk, a milk box. Oh, he's stabbing the milk bag. <laughs> Capri Sun gets in his eye. Oh, yeah. Every time. Got to sit next oh, to the man. teacher on the bus. Cool kid doesn't want to sit with me. But yeah, the po- <laughs> part of this section, you probably were sitting with the cool kids, Kara. You're probably up front, in the front, doing something. Wait, front, front was not cool kids. Back was cool kids. No, yeah, back, back is, everyone knows back is stoners. Yeah, those, those are, the, are cool kids, the cool kids. kids. Eli, what's wrong with you? <laughs> no, because they did drugs and drugs aren't cool. Wow. Oh. So much. You, w- you went to so a weird school. Eli. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. He just isn't. Aw- it's great. This is fantastic. Oh, I got I my see. own lunch table all to myself. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I was the coolest kid in school. <laughs> I was the treasurer of the drama club. I know what was cool. And not I was no. an eczema kid. Listen, I had a lot of eczema. <laughs> But just in case you weren't already playing the world's smallest violin for these climate change skeptics, we're going to talk about the tragedy of Dr. Willie soon and the time that Greenpeace used FOIA to show how much oil money he was taking those (laughs) bastards. (laughs) Willie soon literally got paid $1.2 million between 2005 and 2015 from the fossil fuel industry without disclosing it, got all the way caught, and then... (laughs) They're interviewing him. He's like, yeah, was, the newspaper caught me. I, I cried a little bit. I cried. <laughs> I cried a lot. Okay, yeah, I had a full breakdown. It was. And that's the whole scene. Yeah. He, he doesn't was, explain himself. It was very hard for me to get caught taking money from big oil. And I was like, me too, baby. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what's what's the argument here? <laughs> Cut is the argument. Cut, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Point made. Uh, Unsure what it was. (laughs) But if that wasn't scary enough, now we get a title card that says jailing skeptics, which actually means 
random clips of people not in power saying they should go to jail out of context. <laughs> right. And and to be clear here, let's let's just reinforce if we haven't done so already that when they use the word skeptic, they're using it wrong. Yes. <laughs> they are climate yeah. deniers. Yeah. Uh, speaking of using skeptic wrong, I believe they present Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as being pro-science here? They do. Like I a, know, that was he's weird. He's a bad guy to them in this movie. <laughs> but isn't he on their side? On vaccine stuff, he sure the fuck is. <laughs> oh, right, but he's ultra-liberal, so he, yeah, he's pro-climate change. He's yeah, pro-climate change. That's a weird thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He likes killing change. babies and changing <laughs> climates. Yep. Yeah, kill those babies and the polar bears. Yeah, but we get to hear RFK Jr. talk a little bit, and I love it's so delightful that the Kennedy accent, but going through his like laryngectomy robot device voice right. at the same time from the anti smoking. Oh my god! But he also sounds kind of crazy. Yeah, like. I see why they use the clip, to be honest, because it it does sound crazy. That's why they led with him saying like, these people should all go to jail. But what he's really saying is that the people who can be proved culpable of damaging the climate beyond repair or of conspiring to continue to damage the climate so that, you know, the next generation grows up ill. Yeah. Those people should be held responsible. They should go to jail. Of course. <laughs> But he's, er, but they uh, conflate they it. They should go to jail. They conflate yeah. it with the fact that people, they're like, no, they think people who don't believe in climate change should go to jail. And it's like, no, what they're saying is that oil industry executives who knowingly, who do believe in climate change <laughs> and knowingly make these decisions should go to jail the same way that the cigarette executives who we have on record being like, oh, these dumb fucks, they're just going to keep smoking and then they're all going to die. Like, <laughs> Yeah, they should have gone to jail, too. Yeah. And they bring up the fact that certain states have used RICO charges to, like, make sure that there is actual justice for the said CEOs. But they act like, yeah, you know, if a Chinese company dumps a bunch of sulfates into a river in Alabama, they're probably going to come for your Uncle Frank, who don't <laughs> think it's getting much hotter around these parts <laughs> next. Exactly. It's so <laughs> infuriating. Yeah. Relax. Your Uncle Frank's not the consigliere for that Japanese oil, whatever. <laughs> no. That was a great word you just used. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And now we're going to tackle... Rico, number two. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to tackle religion because these motherfuckers wanted to make sure they made it onto god awful movies <laughs> right yeah I did notice that there was like there were the little nuggets until here but you can't it, it's so inextricably linked when you're talking about these like ultra right wing think tanks that they can't not also be evangelical Mm -hmm. So like, and really, what does this all come down to? Well, it all comes down to political power and control, but also this like weird manipulative propaganda of like, Jesus wants the white people to stay in power. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> and also God wouldn't let the earth go to shit because... The flood? Like, I don't Unless understand it, honestly. The flood? <laughs> it's an <laughs> eminent flood. And, yeah, because the eminent flood. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and the thing that they hit here is that global warming is a religion, right? It's a new religion dedicated to the planet Earth. And, and but they don't Warming believe. It. In, yeah. But they don't believe in <laughs> separation of church and state. And I wrote in my notes, really, Kevin? Are you a big fan of separation of church and state? Because... <laughs> Exactly. I've seen your movies, buddy. Right. And it's like, okay, so they're claiming that this is some sort of new religion. But what is interesting is that every religion other than Judeo-Christian faiths have always been supportive and reverent of the climate. Like, this is human spirituality from the beginning, right? From, like, indigenous early hunter-gatherer groups, the religious preferences and the spiritual development happened as an intricate connection to the planet. And only Judeo-Christian faiths and sects that were became kind of interlinked with capitalism and interlinked with these governmental systems, these are the religions that started to pull away from the climate. Yeah. 
And even not all of them. There are some really amazing Christian sects out there and, and Jewish sects out there that are very reverent of, of the earth and think all of these guys are assholes because they are, right? I know, I know actually a lot of very religious people who are like, yes, climate change is real and I have a religious obligation to be good to Mother Earth. But beyond that, like these, the argument that they're making that this is some sort of new religion and that those of us who care about the environment can't, look at science and only look at it religiously is batshit for so many reasons. A, it's older than your religion, <laughs> so yes. <laughs> but B, like, no, the scientists are on this side of the argument. Yeah. The religious people who are so religious that they're not willing to accept the scientific truth are on your side of the argument. Right. But let's be clear. The reason why Mike Pompeo doesn't care about climate change is because he believes sword mouth Jesus and his <laughs> army of 3,544 <laughs> dead souls will defeat the woman faced bear breasted lion chested <laughs> scorpion locusts and the winged Daniel Eagle dragon triumphant <laughs> antichrist in the final battle while he's still alive, right? So, so like, okay, who is the bare-chested, bare-breasted Antichrist? Is it AOC or Greta Thunberg? Oh, well, oh, I, like think it's, uh, I think it's a Voltron. <laughs> of those two? Yeah. Spoiler. Co multiple copies of those two, different sizes. <laughs> and speaking of children, now we're going to talk about the indoctrination of kids in our schools by teaching them science. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, oh, and this is like the first lady that we get to see. E.T.'s mom. Yep. <laughs> what was her name? Bechdel test. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> this is also where we get the title card that says one plus one equals global warming. <laughs> <laughs> like it was a riddle. And I was like, so two. You're saying global warming's two? <laughs> and it, so global warming squared is five? I don't understand what he's <laughs> trying to tell me. <laughs> Big brother. <laughs> I forget this woman's name. She she wrote a book called Training for Treason, which I super duper want to read, but it's all about how the schools are brainwashing your kids with liberal values. And one of the things she said is like, oh, the schools teach you, you know more than your parents. Your parents are ignorant. Your grandparents are ignorant. <laughs> and I wrote in my notes. I mean, statistically, your grandparents are pretty fucking stupid. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. I loved my grandma, but... She got to do two letter boggle words. I mean, there's a reason. <laughs> that was kind of her whole argument, wasn't it? Like as she started to break it down and get to the crux of the argument, she was like, we're teaching kids not to believe their parents, but to believe evidence. <laughs> like yeah. how horrible. Basically, she's saying we're creating a world in which we can maybe you know, progress past racism. <laughs> what a horrible world to live in. <laughs> it's so clearly just angry parents who didn't understand the common core math that their kid brought home and they got all angry about it. <laughs> and now they're trying to say, like, climate science is common core math. <sighs> but we all die if your stupid dad can't estimate two-digit addition like you can because you learned thing. It's a big, whatever. It's frustrating. I have to admit, like, it's frustrating because I see it in my own family where I have a father who's not really a climate denier, but definitely a Trump supporter. He's very religious, but he's also scientifically minded. He, ha he has a degree in engineering and he has a good job and um, he's very smart. And so it's frustrating when I hear the kinds of arguments that are definitely like fostered by watching Fox News. But one of the things that I notice is a very common thing, like for example, right, I think it was right after we did Alice. Is was it Allison's Choice? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> My dad and I were arguing via text, and he said something along the lines because it was when they were, you know, Amy Comey Barrett and blah blah blah. And I was like, "Listen, no offense, but I don't care about your take." Your take has nothing to do with my autonomy as a woman. I could give a shit what you think. And he was like, well, I mean, I believe in a woman's right to choose, just not to the end all be all, like not to the full extent. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, you know, like late term abortion. And I was like, that's, that doesn't exist. <laughs> like that's a Fox <laughs> News talking point, blah, blah, blah. Uh. So we're going on and on. And he's like, what are you even talking about, Care Women get late-term abortions all the time. And I take a screenshot of, like, the CDC website. Like, I go there in 10 seconds that shows the percentages of first term, second term, and unfortunately, the horrible decision that has to sometimes be made late in a third term, which is like 0.001% or something like that. And I send it to him. 
And he's like, I'm tired. I can't keep up with how fast you're doing. <laughs> and I was like, you can't keep up with my facts. <laughs> like, <laughs> Fuck you, dad. <laughs> and that's really the issue, right? That she's presenting is that kids now have access to more information. They are able to educate themselves in a quicker way. They can leave their bubbles more, more realistically. And they're armed with facts. So when they come home to their parents and they're like, remember how you taught me that a dinosaur was a Jesus horse? <laughs> <laughs> like I learned something in school that, you know, I'm pretty sure I believe. And their parents are like, fuck, what do I do? What do I do? Yes. Where are you finding all that? It's like you got like an information superhighway. Real fast. <laughs> you always got new stuff. Like a series of tubes. Yeah. Fuck you. But yeah, according to this movie, at least, first you educate the kids and then they vote for people who say true things. <laughs> and that's bad. <laughs> that is bad, according to this movie. Education and democracy, both liberal Ugh. conspiracies. That's correct. Yeah, I would I, say. so much better when we could just brainwash everybody. <laughs> it's better. Just indoctrination is so much better than education, right? <laughs> okay, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree if I'm in charge. But <laughs> I just want to bring up one other amazing moment in this little section. Well, two. First of all, we get to see Greta Thunberg improvising the bell jar and being all crazy and dark for a second. So that was fun. I love oh, her. She's the best. I'm kind of on this movie's side about Greta Thunberg. Because, oh, no. She, here's Greta's point. She's like, wait, if climate change is real, why aren't you all freaking out about it? And they're like, oh, well, um, you got to relax. And she's like, no, I'm not going to fucking relax. You all said the earth is going to end. And it's like, yeah, but we're saying that in grown up. You don't, <laughs> don't worry about it, Greta. And she's like, I am worried about it. I'm depressed and scared and terrified all the time. And we're like, no, don't, don't. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> like, Greta, Greta. You're freaking me out with the Sylvia Plath. <laughs> Stop it with your honesty, Greta. Like, Greta. This, <laughs> this movie is the perfect example of my own cognitive dissonance when it comes to global warming, right? Which is like, global warming's real, but there's no need to get all angry about it, Greta. Relax, okay? And I'm over here like, I totally identify with Greta. And that's probably because I personally am training to be an existential psychotherapist. <laughs> and she's like Nietzsche incarnate. I was going to say, <laughs> she's the final exam to become an existential exactly. psychotherapist. And I just love her right there. for yeah. it. You, you got to have a conversation her. with her and Maria Abramovich and come out the same person you went in. Yeah. And boom, there's your degree. <laughs> <sighs> okay, and just real quick, the one other thing I was talking about is they show us the commercial where the teacher asks her class of British students if they could maybe, you know, help the planet in a tiny little way, like, you know, ride bicycles or something like that. And then she says, oh, everybody raise your hand if you're willing to do that. And everybody but two kids raised <laughs> this hand, is weird their hand. And then, and then she pushes a button and those two children explode. <laughs> And but not like not like a superimposed flame over top of them, like a very expensive, wet, realistic, yeah. like Super brutally wet. graphic explode. Like they're sitting on an IED. What? What is the? I know there's context for this PSA. What is the context? For I this don't know PSA? because I was like, that's fucked up. <laughs> like even I was like, climate hustle too. You make a good point. <laughs> I'm looking this up. I'm now. so proud of Great Britain for airing that commercial. If that's where that was from. Like, <laughs> so good. PSA where kids in class explode. <laughs> they just get dropped into a rancor cage. I don't care. Like that's no. This PSA about climate change was real. It featured exploding children and airborne body parts. And apparently Sony, I found an article where Sony dropped out of the campaign after the exploding kids. What was the point though? Oh, oh! It was narrated by um, is it Gillian Anderson from the X Files? Well, there you have really? it. Really? <laughs> yeah, and it was UK. It was a Sony. The violent nature of the video so incensed Sony UK that the company dropped all support for the campaign. Oh, and it was British. It was British. Nailed it. It was uh, Keo Sarah said it was a grave error of judgment, disapproval, condemned it by ten to ten. Um. Harsh words for the campaign. So they really aired that. They really aired that. Yep. So, so all right. Points for climate. So many points too. for the UK. Yeah. It, the video has already been unleashed into the digital wild where climate change skeptics can be found seething and disapproval. Let this be a lesson for future climate change campaigns. Don't get too radical or you'll lose support. 
from both your supporters and the people who disagree with you. Arr. Yeah, it that really didn't help anything. It only hurt. <laughs> what a weird, what a weird thing. <laughs> wow. Ugh, I know. Okay, so uh, learn your lesson. Lesson learned, exploding kids, a little too far for a few people. That's yeah, fine. <laughs> because ultimately my question is, what are they trying to say? Are they trying to say like, if you don't do your part, this is where you're going to end up anyway? You'll die? Or that that's the future of the British school system, like Big Brother. Oh, right? That's making their point. Wouldn't it have made more, more sense if she like pushed the button and then the sun came out of the sky or like a giant magnifying glass went over their heads and then they were like burned to death? <laughs> sure. <laughs> See, we're already workshopping better things than people who made this PSA. Or, or like the sea level <laughs> rised only around their desks and then they drowned. Oh, and they drowning the and children. And you watch them yes. drown. Yes. That's right. a violent, like scary death. It's horrible, like but at least it directly connects to the fact that that they want to be inactive about climate change. I don't understand why if they want to be inactive about climate change, their teacher will murder them. <laughs> like that's a weird disconnect for me. Look, you all heard it here first. Kara Santa Maria wants to drown children who don't believe in climate change. <laughs> Great. Now that's going to be a fucking website, isn't it? Do it. Already bought Already it. The, the words came out of your mouth and it was spoken into reality. <laughs> I'm just I'm just over here <laughs> loving how much money you're paying to go daddy on my behalf. <laughs> All right. Well, that website's locked in. And uh, <laughs> just uh, more generally, it sounds like the problem is either the fossil fuel industry or possibly uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. You decide. <laughs> and while you're deciding, we're going to take one more quick break and then we'll be back to hear why it's numbers in the RICO law defying conclusion of Climate Hustle 2. Hey, hold still, buddy. Hey, Eli, what you doing there? And uh, why are you putting a pinstripe suit on your baby? Oh, hey, Kara. Hey, Heath. So <laughs> you remember that hilarious character the kid did in the movie this week, Little AOC? Not even slightly hilarious. No, super upsetting. Yeah. So I got to thinking, what's Little AOC without Little Ted Cruz? So yeah, he's going to harass the shit out of little AOC. Your baby is? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's already quote tweeted her dishonestly like three dozen times. Not to mention all the times he likes to coyly tweet to his dangerous right wing following that someone should get rid of her to protect America. That sounds like a terrible idea. Hey, no, don't worry. Don't worry, Heath. Our buddy Thomas Smith is dressing his babies up as Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. And, and those babies are strongly condemning my baby's behavior. So... Yeah, Eli, I don't think that's better. Mm, well, you know, that's politics, guys. If you don't like it, vote. Vote against your baby? Yeah, yeah. But good luck. Me and Anna are strong supporters, so. Anna's okay with this? Oh, yeah. Pretty much any chance to put the kid in a costume. Okay, yeah, that tracks. Eli, I don't know how to say this, but I think you have access to too many babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you sound just like our lawyer. Well, I mean, less panicky, but yeah. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> and we're back. And this is where the climate scientists really ramp it up and challenge the movie. Apparently, climate change is going to fuck up the barley crop in the world. And I will not be able to get drunk and stop caring about <laughs> climate change. This oh, is an no. interesting argument. I will, <laughs> will be need to, to have some talking down. <laughs> this movie needed a trigger warning for Heath. Absolutely. <laughs> But wow. this last third of the movie is dedicated to the bad ideas climate change activists have to fix climate change, starting with mandating solar and wind power. Oh, right. Yeah, because this is back to that global cabal new world order, apparently. Yeah, exactly. Solar, yeah. Mandated solar and wind and all of our rights are taken away. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and the, the arguments they're going to use here are that windmills are ugly and the sun is not always there. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Did this movie literally claim that the sun is only shining 10 to 40% of the year? Yep. <laughs> yes, that is an exact What quote. the fuck do they even think they mean? Wait, and then don't they interview a climate denier who goes on to talk about how his solar panels don't provide enough electricity because the sun isn't always there. 
why do you have solar panels if you're a climate denier? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> why do you have solar panels if you're in a movie talking about how solar panels don't work? <laughs> I can't. It's so, it's just my brain hurts so much. <laughs> Also, tiny note about that guy. As they're interviewing, he left his screen with all the windows in the background of his interview. It's so confusing. It's so distracting. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's a climate science denier. And the window in his background is very clearly showing a graph of the temperature of the globe going up over the last 40 years. He's clearly got that chart up. Yep. Also, I just want to add one more thing. One more problem with uh, wind power. Uh huh. I don't know if you heard. Wind turbines kill birds. <laughs> Why did they show that like horrific video? <laughs> so they show a video funny. of a bird. I think it was like a vulture or something flying into a wind turbine and die. And it's a big bird. So then it's like on the ground and they zoom in on it. It's like, are they getting kicks out of this? Like, why did they stay on that dying bird for so long? Yeah, for, for as much as they're trying to tug at our heartstrings with that, they are citing the YouTube video, which it's pulled from in the corner, which is called like massive bird fail or something like <laughs> yeah. that, which <laughs> kind of takes away the seriousness of the moment. <laughs> yeah. And we're also watching Tucker Carlson do this interview. And he's got somehow it looks like he's always refusing baby food. That's his resting <laughs> face. Like he's really mad about the baby food that he's going to have to eat eventually. He's going. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, yuck. So now we're going to talk about bad idea. Number two, energy rationing. And the example of this is that in the movie 1984, they they turned the lights off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, also in New York City. They turned off the Empire State Building for a second. So, yeah, mm -hmm. energy rationing. So they realize that if we ration energy when it's necessary, it prevents us from just not having any later, right? <laughs> they do like, not they realize, realize that. that. They do that's not that realize that. They realize that, none of that. Okay. In fact, they say carbon rationing means no more energy. <laughs> like rationing the zero in their head is what's going to happen. I don't know. This is also where they can't help themselves but be racist. They're like, they want us to just be like all the underdeveloped countries. And they keep showing us like sad footage of Africa because oh, their point God. is, you want to be Africa? Because that's Africa. Energy rationing is Africa. Uh, yeah, because that's what's happening there. They're rationing They're their energy. They're rationing their energy. <laughs> Yeah, in Sub-Saharan right. Africa. Yeah, yeah. The IPCC is like, man, let's just not give the Africans any energy. Yeah. What? And then, as though... They couldn't make a more dishonest argument about the suffering of people. They're going to talk about the reason that the elderly die in their unheated homes in the winter is because environmentalism, environmentalism makes heat too expensive. What? <laughs> yeah. They claim that like there was a, a tough winter in Europe recently and like an extra 7,000 people died of the cold because of that tough winter. But they're claiming like they froze to death in their apartment watching Greta Thunberg on their laptop instead of turning <laughs> on their heat. Yeah. Right. Like this has nothing to do with income inequality. It has nothing to do with like a lot of economic policies that they <clears throat> support, like trickle down economics. <laughs> no. It has everything to do with tree huggers telling them not to change their thermostat by a degree. And, and to make right. it worse, <laughs> the pundit they have telling us this tragic tale is Lord Hammersham Schmockbottom. <laughs> <laughs> a literal, he is literally part of the feudal system. And he's like, oh, don't you feel bad for all those people who starved to death in the winter because Greta Thunberg made them turn off their space heaters? <laughs> Kiss my ring. Is your eye expanding? Do you need to <laughs> shunt that out or something? I say, where the bee come moisten my eyeballs while I tell people <laughs> what the poor are up to? Oh, my God. <laughs> So now it's time for bad idea number three, planned recessions, or as we call it in America, electing Republicans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Apparently the recessions need to be unplanned, according to this movie. They prefer that. <laughs> well, what's amazing about, they show it because I was like, what the fuck is this supposed to even be? But they just show a clip of a person being like, look, 
The economy can't always go up. You can't have infinite economic growth. That's not possible. And they're right. like, yeah, so you just want the economy to stop? <laughs> yep. Like how about, Sometimes. how about stability? Could we maybe just have some stability for a while? <laughs> but but the whole time they're trying to claim that poor people are affected by it. Like if we curtail the fossil fuel industry, poor people are hit the most. Like they're poor people are going to lose billions from their energy portfolios. But <laughs> <laughs> the rich people who own the oil companies are just looking out for us. <sighs> oh. Fuck. All right. Now it's time for bad idea number four. Eliminate people because you know how climate change activists are constantly suggesting genocide? This movie's going to refute that. <laughs> oh, talk, talk about a straw man argument <laughs> if there ever were one. Okay, I found this section compelling. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the clip they use is James Cameron talking to Arnold Schwarzenegger on the DVD extras of the Terminator movie. Wait, really? That's what that was from? That's what it's an interview. <laughs> <laughs> but the point they're making is that we're saying people should have less kids because that would be better for the environment. That would be. Right. That's and nobody responsible. is responsible. And nobody is claiming some sort of, you know, one child policy. Basically, they show clips of Al Gore with Bill Gates saying like, women should have access to family planning. Like women should have access to birth control and education for women should be improved around the globe. And that's going to dramatically affect the population rate. But they're like, that's horrible. You're, you're <laughs> eugenicist. Like I what? Okay. Again, I, I found this a little bit compelling. I don't think like, all right, one child policy is a little strict, but like, couldn't we do it like carbon credits where we trade them around or something like that? <laughs> All right, well, Heath is a, vying for his position in climate it's a market solution. The invisible Heath, this hand. Is a terrible that's, that's idea. Good. Yeah, the invisible hand on other people's penises. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the human race isn't going away. We could have less births, and that would be good. Right, but the good news is we know that there will be fewer childbirths if women are empowered. Like it's a problem that will solve itself without having to use these eugenic tools because that's dangerous because as we know the problem with eugenics is who gets to decide who gets to have kids and who doesn't richard who dawkins are, yes. exactly so like this is not carbon what we credits want. because it's feminism yes that's what i meant <laughs> <laughs> saved it saved it and also by the way there are more problems with eugenics than that <laughs> let just just to be clear just polar but, bears why do you hate science kara why do you hate science i think the thing that's frustrating <laughs> is that a lot of people don't understand this kind of reasoning. They don't understand the history of these arguments, right? Like early on, the actually the eugenic argument in America, which is horribly dangerous, started as something that most people who were in power agreed with. And that's like rich white people. But it's because it really came with this idea of like modern science is going to help us have healthier babies. So this is a good thing we should all sign on for. And then what happened? corrupt, horrible people were like, yeah, better babies, in my view, are white babies. Better babies, in my view, are babies that aren't socially deterrent, right? And they literally thought with new scientific tools, we're going to be able to prevent individuals who have deviant behaviors, because they thought that was genetic, from being able to make children, which is disgusting and horrible. And then from there, we get Nazi Germany. Like, all sorts of horrible things happened after that. But really, the seed of this movement was in the U.S. A lot of people don't realize that. And then it sort of spread to Europe. And so eugenics is disgusting, and it's horrible. But now, every conversation about population control is taken to that place immediately. And yeah. it's like nobody can have an intelligent discussion about family planning. When somebody is empowered to make the decision for their own family they often will choose to have fewer mouths to feed. Nobody is trying to come into their homes and say, you're not allowed to do this. That's what happened in China, and that was very dangerous. Or you buy your credits or you sell your credits. You have, no, there's a, it's no, a great system. No credits, no credits. <laughs> and you all cap it, you know the total. But the thing is, if women are empowered to become educated and to make decisions that she feels are the best for her and her family, she is very likely not going to have 
a very large family with lots of children, unless her religion calls for it or she is spiritually called to do that. And in many ways, that's okay because it's counterbalanced by the number of women who choose not to have several kids, but only replace or reduce, meaning two or one or no children. But that should be a choice. And the cool thing is we have good economic evidence that when women have that choice and they're empowered, they won't have as many kids. So we don't have to even think about resorting to draconian processes that are dangerous and immoral. Yeah. So that's why I hate it when people try to equate family planning with eugenics or genocide because it's really fucking disingenuous and it pisses me off. Yeah. And it all it really is is sexist. It's them saying, let's not give women the right to choose. Absolutely. And you get genetic, the genetic engineering gets attacked in that same way. Absolutely. It becomes a ridiculous conversation that's not about what it's actually getting at. Yeah. And I mean, I think that speaks to the way that a lot of people see the world free people who like think about three free market economics as being like a lack of regulation, which is insane. And people who think about trickle down economics as actually being a viable option. It's it's too black and white for them. Like they can't think about the fact that like with genetic engineering, regulation is what makes it possible because there are good things about it and bad potential outcomes. So let's prevent the bad potential outcomes with fucking regulation. Okay, rant over, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I read in Milton Friedman that a great way to fix the carbon problem. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> you did not. <laughs> and they're completely ignoring that the best way to keep people from having more children is to just have one. Let me tell you. <laughs> Yeah. I'm t- you could get the whole nation together and have them change a diaper that the baby immediately poops into. You get all that. You get the family size down to one right there at the start. Right. Or like me, maybe less. I learn by observing my friends, and then I just have none. <laughs> hey, you found the answer. And yeah. Eli, you doing your thing. You get to sell one of your things, and you get a bonus. <laughs> That's right. Just stop with the fucking credit. Yes. You get the credit. You get two, I would say, and you get to sell one if you're doing one. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. You're not here for all the 271 other episodes where he's been proposing his child credits ideas. This is the first episode where it makes it to air. All right. And speaking of crazy ideas that this movie's going to pretend are honest representation of other people's opinions, they also want to shrink people. Okay, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> this is such a fantastic idea. And b- by the way, I don't know if you guys have heard of this documentary I saw called Downsizing with Matt Damon. <laughs> yes. It's possible. The 2017 box office flop Downsizing and Matthew Lau, famous NYU crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> Who's adorable. Look, you should look up stuff about him. He's very well-intentioned. He's adorable. He's just also not a part of this dimension. <laughs> Is this a bad idea? Is his science like not good? Can well, we not shrink people? What, the biohacking stuff about like being less consumptive? It's sci-fi. It's interesting. It's like one of those really interesting theoretical debates that people have about string theory, for example. Like it's complicated and it's interesting and the outcomes of it could be really fascinating, but it's not possible, first of it's all. It's not possible. <laughs> And We're even sure. if it were, it's not something that anybody would enact. Yeah. You wouldn't want everybody to be tiny little people. Just, yeah, but we can't. Like, it's... Shrink us? With a what? Like, with a shrink ray that you yeah, have Yeah, I was picturing a ray, but uh, <laughs> whatever. But the best part is, Matthew Lau has made his entire career by, as Kara said, taking exciting conversations and then holding a press conference and being like, hello, everybody. Today, I have decided to create clones for using for extra organs for when we need them. And then he walks off the stage and takes no questions. That is Matthew Lau's entire scientific career. And he is the perfect subject for Climate Hustle 2. Should should we not do that and make the clones for the thing? He can't do any of it. He can't do any of it. But we should should definitely, if we could make like a non-sentient grow a liver, right? No, we should should definitely not do that. What? We should grow a liver in like a Petri dish, but we shouldn't clone you okay, and like yeah, I'm, put right. you in like a neck chain and just keep you in the basement and harvest your organs. I, That's not I a good idea. I had a neck chain until just now, but like <laughs> we need livers. It's not okay. <laughs> pretty sure, pretty sure when an organism is cloned, basically a new creature develops and that creature has a brain and, you know, all its parts. Mm. 
Yeah. 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 We don't okay. know how to clone non-sentient versions of ourselves. Okay. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Follow-up question. Ohio. <laughs> Follow-up <laughs> <laughs> Follow question. Can we get webbed fingers like a duck? I mean, people have a trait. Like there are certain people who have webbed fingers and toes genetically. Cool. And so I guess if you br- if they only bred with other people with webbed fingers and you toes. You got Heath back on the eugenics again, Kara. <laughs> this is an amateur mistake. <laughs> Eventually, you'd have a lot of webbed fingers. But why would we want that? We don't live in the water. You could swim so fast. But no, we don't Kara, live in the we're water. We're going to live in the water soon. <laughs> this movie Kara, gets a lot of viewers. You come on this show... You make a few jokes, but then next week, Heath's got a bunch of pictures of duck people being forced to fuck for carbon credits. Are you here to clean that up, Cara Santa Maria? No, I have to clean that up. And next week, I'm out. See you guys in the morning. <laughs> Marsha's got to pick up the broken pieces you've left behind. Okay, but the point is, this movie is saying it's like a slippery slope from solar panels to, to microscopic duck people. And I don't understand that <laughs> argument. Those are both good things. <laughs> Oh, so now they're going to come for the vegans. Mm. Yes. (laughs) And again, we get a little clip of Matthew Lau here who doesn't just want everyone to stop eating meat. He wants to make everyone allergic to meat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we we actually do have a method for that. It's really interesting. It's called trying out veganism and then becoming (laughs) lactose intolerant (laughs) and not able to eat meat anymore. Uh. Yeah, this is another... Pretty strong argument by the movie. They're, like the <laughs> climate change, real people want us to, you know, get healthy like Eli Bosnick. So, like, <laughs> it's a strong argument by the movie. Does Matthew Lau also recommend something like a nicotine patch for meat? Because that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Is that real? Yeah. It's like the the meat allergy. I think it is real. Yeah. What? Yeah. So I could like. So just belt up like a meat all around my torso. We just have patches everywhere and get like super meat. No, 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 no. So no. what this does is like, if you, there are people. <laughs> I, I, wait, I'm so sorry, that. Kara. I have to interrupt you. Heath, I want you to describe what you think the meat patch is before Kara <laughs> yes. explains it. This yes, is please. vital. It's so, okay. Okay. I will. I please. will. I, it, it's so, you, you know, steak, right? I do. And then, like, you have, like, a little, like, circle of glue around the edge. Sure. And you can, like, patch it. You get, and so you get the meat. So you can be, like, eating a steak and getting, like, like, you can, like, eat a ribeye and get a sirloin. Or, like, you can make (laughs) filet. You stick the steak to your skin and you eat it through your skin? Is what you're you're getting, like, you're getting, like, the the juice. The patch is made out of meat. Skin, skin juice. (laughs) Absorption. No. <laughs> okay. You did a show about skin books, whatever. Makes sense. <laughs> no, the idea here is that you're inducing an allergy so that when you eat meat, it makes you ill. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah that's so the meat if, patch. If I have a patch that induces an allergy, because some people have natural allergies against certain proteins and meat and stuff. So if I have a patch that induces an allergy that makes it so that I don't like the meat because I get sick every time I stop, every time I eat meat, I'm eventually going to train myself to not eat meat. And if I stop eating meat, (laughs) then I'm going to be less consumptive for the environment. Okay. I agree with that last part, but if I... (laughs) Or you could just not eat meat. If I got one of those, I would just like eat through the allergy. And be like, right. <laughs> Keith would be the outlier that destroys the meat patch business. Blah, good, more meat. You know what you would be? You'd, you'd be like that episode. Did you guys ever see that episode of Black Mirror where the surgeon had the thing that made him feel what people were feeling? Like they were in pain. So he was able to treat them because he could feel their symptoms. Yes. But oh, he, got that's like, awesome. he got like hooked on it. And he was like, ah, oh, I'm getting such a rush. And he starts <laughs> killing he people. Was, yeah. Yeah, and then he was like killing people so he could feel the rush. That's you, Heath. That is, oh, that's a good show. About that's me. Heath for a lot of reasons. <laughs> right. No, but here, here's the part where they're like, oh, okay, maybe instead of the meat patch, we could just eat bugs. Ridiculous. Let's shit on like multiple cultures around the world. And they show Nicole Kidman eating bugs and being like, yeah, they're not bad. And they're like, what a cunt. <laughs> it's, the <best. laughs> it's the best because the, this movie just went with the argument, yuck. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's the segment. <laughs> the, the segment is Tucker Carlson being like, I don't want the bugs. 
Yeah. <laughs> Wait, who wrote in their notes? Nicole Kidman eating bugs was confusing for me sexually. Uh, that was me. That would be me then, right? Are you telling me that wasn't confusing for you sexually? Oh no, I was. I knew exactly. Yeah, it was. It, was, it, was <laughs> it created sexual certainty in both me and Kara. <laughs> I was alive for the first time. Oh, she's so classy and dignified. She, is. she did it with Hashi, which is so chopsticks like amazing. Stuff. And now. The movie is just going to give us a title card called Money. I'm guessing because they mixed it up with their to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I want to point out about this section, it's about like, uh, is climate change, cl big money is behind climate change, which is fucking hilarious from an oil company. Yeah. But Kevin Sorbo begins this narration with a huge, sad sigh. He's like, Oh, so the climate it's and they didn't do a second take it's just him he might as well it, he might as well begin this section by being like I was fucking Hercules anyways so <laughs> but yeah the point is that Zeno was not better I heard that earlier climate change is big money and the National Science Foundation is a huge money suck I've never understood this argument or it's like I get the argument because they just say stupid shit all the time. So I get, oh, this is just another stupid fucking argument. But what I don't get is how people believe this. Like how people go, oh yeah, big climate. <laughs> <laughs> but then they're like, those poor, pathetic oil companies. Right. <laughs> like it's so confusing. Yeah. Skeptic nerds with a podcast and oil barons. And they, they, they're confused by who's behind this and make, who has something to gain. I don't get it. I just don't get it. We also get one of the pundits here who says that the only group that gets money at MIT is the climate change group. And I wrote in my notes, really? Not the bomb guys? I feel like the bomb guys get a little bit of money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they have a couple other departments, I think, at that institution. <laughs> and then we go back very quickly to the hypocrisy argument because Al Gore sold his TV network to Al Jazeera. Right. And Al Jazeera is an oil company. <laughs> <laughs> How is this confused? Big oil, they, they own other shit. That, that, it's almost like there's big money in being an oil company. Yeah, they own stuff. <laughs> Not confusing. And also, as he starts to try and like tell why he's made this decision and why, you know, this sort of, the calculus was making sense, they like just cut him off. <laughs> they yep. were like, we didn't right. get to hear his answer. Yep. They're like, he's a dick. <laughs> yep. It's so good. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. He's literally like, no, no, no. I totally understand the concern. Al Jazeera, you know, oil money. That I'm, I'm selling them this thing. I will explain. Cut. It straight is a to, hard cut. <laughs> yeah. Straight to Professor Walrus talking about uh, <laughs> the, the polar bears again, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hit the, they cut to Professor Walrus explaining that big polar bear is behind people saying <laughs> that the polar bears are dying. Oh, yeah. He literally made the argument like these polar bear scientists are getting so much money. <laughs> and it's like, what? Like the four <laughs> guys who study polar bears? Like, what are you talking also, about? The people who study animals are the saddest weirdos of the science world. The <laughs> saddest weirdos of the science world are the animal watchers who just watch their species and speciality go extinct during their lifetime. Right? You mean the best people? Yeah, what are the you most about? interesting people. Okay. You can get yes. cornered by them at the next skeptic convention. Then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have them on my show all the time, and you I like love polar them. Bear guy? Because they're very existential. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna Bud Dwyer themselves in the middle of an episode of Talk Nerdy. And then we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. If our show has a running theme, it is me making a Bud, Bud Dwyer, Dwyer reference. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Bingo square, everybody. Every chance I get. <laughs> Angelo, draw us the Bud Dwyer square. <laughs> That's going in. <laughs> you think everybody, everybody just took a swig of whatever they were drinking? <laughs> Sorry, I was checking if BudDwyer.com was taken so I could buy it and <laughs> <laughs> redirect, Don't it redirect it to Kara's website. <laughs> <laughs> so, can... Can you guys believe that it took this long into the movie for them to mention George Soros? Yeah! This is where they bring up George for it. Almost Soros. Almost impressive. Yeah. 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 This is where they talk about the real goal of climate change activism to bring about communism. Because, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. The molecules in the atmosphere are 
crisis actors just moving <laughs> faster. <laughs> well, what's amazing is they show this clip of AOC saying we need to make the biggest economic investment since World War II, but they're trying to play it like AOC is Hitler. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> like, we need to decimate Western Europe. <laughs> like, what? But to be clear, we are absolutely trying to steal money from rich people. Like, that is part... Like, they, they give us AOC's chief of staff who, who says the Green New Deal isn't just a climate thing, it's an economy thing, too. Yeah, it yeah. absolutely... I mean, it's called the fucking New Deal. That's in it, not just green. Right. That's part of the thing. But, you know... They stole money from us and we're trying to steal it. Of course we're doing that. Right. They're, they're saying like, why don't we start to develop some new economic policies that help bridge the massive divide between rich and poor, which is a new phenomenon. Our income inequality has only severely grown since, you know, Our the Reagan lifetime. era. Yeah, yeah, like since before I was born. But like, it's not that long ago that the New Deal was something that everybody supported. <laughs> so- yeah. The issue here is that they're saying, yes, climate change is inextricably linked to the economy. And yes, there are ways that we can solve these problems or at least work towards solving these problems together. And they're like, shut up, commie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Baby cap oh, and yeah. trade. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got the former prime minister of the Czech Republic who says communism is bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. And also, yeah, it's all George Soros' fault. Yeah. He's funding apparently all of it. He's giving all that big money to big polar bear. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, we're doing a lot of callbacks to the fucking dark web George Soros satanic cult here. This is also where they explain that the UN wants to create a global government. Right. I wrote in my notes, man, either these movies are running together or we've been watching the same movie every week for 271 <laughs> weeks. Yep. And that's the thing too. Like, I think people listening because they have the added benefit of never fucking having to sit through these hot pieces of garbage. <laughs> they think that we're probably exaggerating. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah, they're saying that that like oh, the commies just want a global government. No, they use the words global government. They literally think the U.N. wants to take over as the new world order. Yep. Yeah, very literally. But don't worry if this movie's got you blue, if it's got you down about the climate monarchy and their rule of the world. We're going to talk about the person who stopped it all. A hero named Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. And this is where they're going to talk about how Donald Trump pulled us out of the Paris Climate Accords because you were allowed to just send the Paris Climate Accords any old piece of paper and they would staple them together. <laughs> right. So first they talk about how it's a nothing accord that has no teeth. And then they talk about how it was like a massive win to get out of it. Like you can't have <laughs> right. all your arguments both ways, people. Trump pulled back a piece of paper that said nothing. Congratulations. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and they show, I love how they show when the climate accord was first enacted. Like when it was first passed, the room full of people cheering and looking really excited. And they like, you know, edit it so that that would be like bad. It's yeah. like, ooh, look at all these people. Slow who motion clapping. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> <laughs> There's like little horns growing out of their heads. <laughs> and now we're going to hear about how we can, as our final title card tells us, fight for freedom. Da, 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 da. It's a clip of Mark Moreno being like, I was complaining about how much America sucks. And a French guy who is totally real told me that America is the freest place in the world. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. He describes America as like the last soldier to fight against the oppression of the the one world government, I guess. Right. Yeah. America is the antidote to 1984, which is apparently happening everywhere else. <laughs> I don't I don't get it. Like, who is Big Brother in this scenario? The U.N.? Well, maybe they got really confused because they also tried to insert a Brave New World reference in here. They did. And yeah. they just had to immediately abandon it because they, Ooh, were, they had movie. no wrong idea. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, Elvis Brave Huxley, New World, different the movie. guy. Yeah. <laughs> different guy. <laughs> we get a cut back to the former prime minister of Czechoslovakia who famously embarrassed himself and his entire country when he addressed the UN and basically said, no, climate change isn't real. But 
he gets to tell the story now. And in his story, everyone applauded for him, not out of politeness, it's because they loved it. And then they came up to him afterwards and said, we totally agree with you, but we can't say that out loud. It's a secret. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it would look bad. But but also don't write it down and don't videotape this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Also, just one other note on this guy and like most of the rest of their panel of quote experts. They've all got a mustache and no beard. And if, <laughs> if all your experts have a mustache and no beard, your thing is fucking wrong. Like, Ooh. I don't need to look at the science or the numbers. You, you, He's you, you, dropping your the experts knowledge. are a, a softball team of cops. It's It's not working out. <laughs> Oh, wait, who wrote this? This is my favorite. America is unique because freedom. Freedom not to wipe chocolate from the side of your Damn mouth. right. Damn right. Absolutely. Oh, he was one of the best experts. He was one of the best experts. So with that call to arms against not oil out of the way, we're going to check back in with little AOC, who is going to introduce a panel a post movie panel. Wait, it's not a panel if there's only two people. It's just two people. <laughs> it's, and one it's of just them, one person interviewing somebody. Else. That's talking. Not just that. <laughs> one of them is the person who made the movie, and the other person is certifiable crazy person, Liz Wheeler. Liz Wheeler. Yep. So wait, I didn't know anything about Liz Wheeler before this, but I mean, I learned everything I needed to know from like the first seven words that came Ready? out of her Ready? Here's what you need to know. Okay. Do you see what I've highlighted here? Liz Wheeler has a minor in Homeland Security from Penn State University. Okay. Uh-huh. Apparently yep. that's Cool. The and does she have like a TV? Oh, yeah. She's on One America News, a TV network that I didn't know existed until tr President Trump took office. Mm -hmm. And he only called on their reporters. They're like Fox News on racism. Like, like they're like... I mean, that's not that's even a good... kind of redundant. I, I know. Like, I'm trying to think. I was going to say on steroids, but like, wh how can you be worse than Fox News? That's OAN. Breitbart. <laughs> yeah, it's like TV Breitbart. You're right. Yeah. It's like TV Breitbart. There you go. Oh, Steve Bannon just got banned from the internet. Like, the entire <laughs> internet. <laughs> I just watched a crazy documentary about Steve Bannon. What a fucking crazy guy. I think he's related to the Quasimodo guy. They have a lot of similar features. <laughs> So Liz Wheeler interviews Mark Morano for a second, and then Mark Morano introduces a clip of Liz Wheeler on OAN yelling about AOC. Oh, it's so weird. She's like, one, why should I believe you? Because you're wrong. Two, <laughs> you promised me the polar bears would be dead. I hate polar bears. <laughs> Three, you said I could eat a guy. <laughs> and then... And then the clip ends and he goes, well done, Liz. And she goes, well done, Mark. And she says, thank you, Mark. And he says, thank you, Liz. <laughs> and they are definitely not robots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then he shows clips of Bill Nye saying, this movie is a hot pile of garbage. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. And Jimmy Kimmel also saying, this movie is a hot pile of garbage. But like, funny. Right. And then that's an argument. I don't understand. Like, it's so funny. Every time they try to show like the counterpoints to shit on, I'm like, yes, yes, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> hot, hot pile of garbage. Got it. Yep, yep. That's what I took away from this too. And then finally, because they found out they needed a third member for it to be a panel, they're going <laughs> to interview 1980s newsman John Stossel, who oh, yeah. apparently did his last report about the inside of a deep fat fryer. What the fuck happened to his face? <laughs> <laughs> also, I didn't know that John Stossel was like, like fell to the dark side. <laughs> Should I have known that? I don't watch Fox News. Wow. Did you see the mustache and no beard? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's your clue. <laughs> Should have known. And to be fair, all John Stossel has to say is, my daughter fucking hates me. That is the entirety of his <laughs> segment. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, you're a fucking sellout shill. I hate you. That's it. Okay, back to you, yep. Liz Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the movie. That's the movie. But we forgot to, we did forget to mention that when little o AOC came back mm -hmm. and said more horrible things, like things that were even, doesn't she like shit on trans Yeah, people? she has a little transphobe joke in there. Yeah, yep. she's got a transphobe joke. Horrible. And she rolls up in her like Barbie Jeep. 
Yeah. And she's like, hello, <laughs> like I'm like AOC and I'm like driving an electric car. Like that's a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just, <laughs> you know, I'm like, ooh, I'm watching it and I go, ooh, I drive an electric Those car. Those power wheels were sweet too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't get it, you guys. I don't get why people or how people watch this and go, yeah, fuck that child. <laughs> Weird. I was so relieved when the movie was over. <laughs> I was so relieved. But then they like had a weird barbershop quartet, like sing us out. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> was at the was end of the that? first movie too. The anti-climate change barbershop quartet. All right. Well, we got some barbershop quartet and we're done. That's official. So last thing before we wrap it up. Uh, again, Kara's been saying all this nerd stuff, data, blah, 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 whatever. Chill. <laughs> Eli, after watching this, how confident are you that global warming is real? Pennsylvania. Kara, <laughs> <laughs> counterpoint? Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And well, one more thing. Exactly how much money are you getting from Big Polar Bear? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's a lot. About- that's who bought you. my electric That's what car. You said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that does it for our review of Climate Hustle 2. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet. We all enjoyed learning to count up to 270 for hundreds of hours in a row, but we found a great way to refresh your brain and take a little break. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. It's time to dive back into the weird and wild world of Secret Agent MS. Great. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode 272 to a merciful close. As always, big thanks to Kara for joining us. And uh, where can everyone hear more of your stuff? You can go to karasantamaria.com. You can go to talknerdy.com. Apparently you can go to Skinbook. skinbooks.com. Yep. There's budwire.skinbook.com. Bud 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 Climateelites.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no! So yeah, just look up Talk Nerdy with Kara Santa Maria. Oh, of course, the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. I'd say check me out on Twitter because that's where I run a feed that has lots of cool new science every week, so you can keep up with what's going on in the world of science all the time. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the penis means nothing. That's what I learned like this week, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, like, I interviewed irrelevant. No, it's not irrelevant. It's just not as powerful as you might think. <laughs> all right. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and then I'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, Skeptocrat, D&D Minus, all available in those podcast places. If you have comments, questions, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Kara Santa Maria and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House Clothes. Breakfast Club. And care about the penis is irrelevant.com before Eli could. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man! <laughs> And Kevin Sorbo went on to become glue. (laughs) (laughs) He's a horse. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.